In this tutorial, I'll give some examples of what you can do with Mazatrol 3D Assist. When you highlight a field in a Mazatrol programming unit and select 3D Assist, you are presented with a context-sensitive selection already chosen for you. However, by clicking on that default choice, the rest of the selections appear. This first page are the most used choices when programming shapes in a unit. The rest of the pages give you more capabilities for determining part details. The page titles are descriptive of the type of measurements each contain. Point for endpoints, midpoints, circle centers, and more. Length for line length, height of a cylinder, diameter, etc. And an angle for determining angles between lines, points, or surfaces. Many of these selections provide a helpful graphic describing their function. Let's get some basic information about the model I'm using shown here. I can use arc circle center and the return Z value to find the overall length of the part. The front of the part is Z0. The back of the part indicates a length of 4.2 inches. To find the angle of the tapped face to the front face of the part, I can use angle between two shapes with the surface modifier. Selecting the front face and the angled face gives me the value of 45 degrees. I can also find the angle from this line to the top surface using a combination of line and surface selection. To program a turning shape, I would enter all the basic unit information and tool data. When I get to the shape section and select 3D Assist, I'm automatically presented with a rotated and section display of the part ready for me to select the starting shape using Continuous Auto. Simply select the first shape in the turn and the last shape in the turn. In this case, I'm going to extend the turn in Z to the known 4.2 in part length. This works for boring as well by selecting the first shape and the last shape. In this case, I'll make a manual edit to shorten the Z length and just break the edge instead of turning all the way through. When I work on angled surfaces, I like to use more local coordinates. Mazatrol provides this capability with the WPC shift and index units for shifting part zero and the B axis angle. I can use arc. Circle center to find the location of the center of the large hole on the index face and make it my new zero. Simply enter the X value of the hole center in Shift X and the Z value in Shift Z. It is important to note that when using auto selection for a shape, the control only looks at the XY plane along the rotated Z axis for shapes. From my earlier measurements, I know the face is at 45 degrees for the index unit. I can now use a line center unit to face the surface by using X0 center line at the rotated surface. And using midpoint to find the center of the two lines to define my toolpath. While I'm at this angle, I can find the four hole pattern for my tapped holes using hole auto. I can also find the diameter and depth of the large hole with diameter and height of a cylinder. Extending the value of 3D Assist, I can use the generated model of the part to make sure my depth is going to clear my turned bore. Adding a bit to the depth to make sure. As I have stated, shapes are only chosen along the defined Z vector based on rotation of the B axis. However, if I use C-point machining instead of standard point machining, the control knows it can rotate the C-axis for positioning. Using this feature, when I select one of the holes at 90 degrees on the outside of the part, all of the accessible holes are selected. Let's move to some examples on a three-axis mill. I've started a line left unit to create this U-shaped cut. To find the shape, I'll use Continuous Auto. Select the first shape in the cut, making sure the dot is at the start of the cut, and the last shape in the cut. When I select input, the shape definition is output to the program. To make the cut better, I'll extend the start and end in Y by one half inch manually. To create these mounting holes, 
I'll use hole auto. Selecting one hole selects all similar holes on the face, adding all of them to the face. Entering them as individual points in my shape. The same thing works for tapped hole patterns like these six tapped holes. In this case, they were entered as a simple square pattern of holes. One of the best uses of hole auto is when you have a large number of randomly positioned holes like this group of tapped holes. Using hole auto, I simply click on one hole, and all of them are quickly added to my program as individual points, saving me from entering each of them individually with the possibility of human error. In milling shapes, Continuous Manual is great for programming center line of a slot. I can use the Circle Center Point modifier to define a line in the center of my groove. And the groove is done. For a shape like this radius triangle cut through the part, I use Continuous Manual, then select all the curves around the part in sequence. And press Input to complete the shape definition. When the pocket is complex and has a defined bottom that is not through the part, I can use bottom to select the bottom of the pocket. The control uses this shape to find all the necessary points around the pocket and enters this information as the pocket definition. As you can see, 3D Assist can be a very useful tool when a part model is available. When combined with the model builder that displays each unit on the programming screen as it's done and the smooth simulation graphics, 3D Assist adds to the confidence programmers want when creating a new part program.